For my favourite scientist, I've chosen Albert Einstein. He must be the most famous scientist. If you ask anyone to name a scientist, they'll pick Einstein. So it seems a bit of a, it's a bit of an obvious choice, I don't know, but um, the way he approached his science, he's absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal man. I mean, his insight into, into what was going on in so many different areas of physics, he really is a genius. I mean, his name has become, you know, people use the word Einstein instead of the word genius. He's sort of entered popular culture in a way that no other scientist has, but ultimately I respect him just for, the, for the, his integrity as a scientist. He's just an amazing, amazing mind. Einstein, as a boy, grew up in Germany, I moved around a little bit, I think, and then ended up moving to uh, Switzerland. I know after his, after his university, he struggled to get a job. He was keen to get a, a lecturing job, but he, he, he failed to get that. I don't know, maybe he'd upset some of his professors, I think. He had a fairly outspoken manner, uh, and they, they maybe weren't so keen to employ him. So he worked in the, um, in the patent office for a while, and so maybe this shouldn't be my favourite scientist. It should be my favourite patent clerk or something like that. But um, certainly some of his most uh, incredible work was done actually while he was working in the patent office, which is quite amazing, really. And then I think people realised his genius, and he, he moved back to Germany and then back to Switzerland. And uh, I think he, in America he, he spent the end of his life, really, so uh, travelled around quite a bit. He'd seen some work um, by uh, Michael Faraday, who was working on uh, electrostatics, electromagnetism, and then James Clerk Maxwell formulated these theories. And out of the theory came um, these equations, which said um, that light is an electromagnetic wave. And that was kind of, that was amazing. They, oh, wow, it's, it's an electric field and a magnetic field. And that was, the, that was I think, what pro excited most people. But Einstein saw that it was an electromagnetic wave whose speed was given by these two constants. And the, these numbers were constants. They weren't, they didn't depend on anything else. They were, they were actually properties of a vacuum. That was his insight, was that light travels at the same speed no matter how fast you're traveling. Um, and it was that, that amazing piece of insight that actually then led him to say, okay, following that to its natural conclusion, you lead to the time dilation effects of special relativity. You lead to the famous equation, E equals MC squared. Um, so it was, it was really his, his conviction in, that, in that, that one moment of cr total clarity, I think, where he said, speed of light is constant for all observers. And then he just followed that to its natural conclusion in a way that maybe other scientists wouldn't have quite believed in that. But I love the fact that it was, it was one idea, that then it was maths that maybe we couldn't do, but it was his idea that started all. And that's what, that's what I think is just amazing. And people maybe don't realize um, it was that wonderful insight. I remember reading when he was, he was just a boy, he was sort of 15 or so, and he, uh, he just kind of had this imagination. I wonder what it would be like to sort of, to ride alongside a, a beam of light to see what it looked like if, if you know could, if you could catch up with it and probably lots of people have had that sort of idea oh what would it be like if you could travel alongside but he went on and figured it out you know so but it was very much a childhood kind of thing and you think oh yeah I think he never sort of lost that uh, that curiosity that kind of childlike curiosity really as he was um yeah so just an amazing man <laughs> Several years later, he, he worked on, on general relativity, which was generalizing the ideas to, uh, to gravity and accelerating frames. And I think he said the happiest thought of his life was when he realized that the effect of a gravitational field was the same as the effect of being in a lift. He liked these lift analogies. So being in a lift and being accelerated. And he realized that, that there's no experiment you could do within your little lift to de determine whether or not you were um, accelerating upwards at 9.8 meters per second, or whether you were standing on the surface of the Earth with g being 9.8 meters per second, there's nothing per second squared. I mean, I've talked about relativity, but he made phenomenal contributions in several different areas of, of physics, which they're the kind of big steps that, that you do require a stroke of genius, I think, to do. And so um, on diffusion and actually sort of proof that, um, that nature is made up of molecules, photoelectric effect is another thing, another massive thing, basically set the ball rolling for um, uh, quantum theory and he's had you know he's had his hand in all these different areas it's just incredible that he could uh, and always kind of picks out this like this key key idea he's like well I'm looking and kind of wasn't influenced by current thinking he just really looked at the data and looked at the experiments and believed them and was looking for a really pure understanding of it yeah so the image of Einstein is quite an amusing one of the sort of the, the crazy haired professor and the uh, the joking about as a practicing scientist, I, I don't find that a problem. I quite like that people have, I mean, he is, he maybe was the first crazy professor basically. And so um, it's kind of fun. It means that people have a, that they have a way of thinking about science. Clearly we're not all the same, but it's just the break of the ice. People think physics is a hard subject, but then you think of Einstein, they go, oh, right, yeah, he was kind of crazy. That's, and it's, it's not a bad thing. Personally, I don't mind, um, 
I don't think anyone would really mind any analogy with Einstein. <laughs> You're a crazy professor like Einstein, are you? <laughs> for, for me, you know, I would never ever compare myself to Einstein. I mean, his achievements, he was a complete genius, a one in a lifetime. Um, I actually just feel myself really privileged to be able to, to teach some of his insights to my students. That, for me, is just amazing, to, to show them these equations and say, look, and he had the insight to do this, and that, for me, doesn't make me feel um, depressed at all. It makes me excited that um, I can teach the next generation that enthusiasm that Einstein had, that I you know, really enjoy his work and to pass that on, for me, that's, that's wonderful. The ideas in general relativity where we talk about these and you really see the students getting behind the ideas and discussing it and you think, okay, there's another generation who have been inspired by him. I think that's, that's fantastic, that's great. All right, I've been holding this all along. So this is our, uh, we had a physics department cricket team while I was in Edinburgh and um, geek humour, um, we came up with the cricket with the name E equals MCC, so clearly a pun on Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared, and then a pun on uh, MCC, the uh, ruling body of cricket. So, yeah, geek humour, but yeah, we thought it was funny. And the, the team still exists, and I think they're doing well, so... <laughs>